What is up, Lunker League? So if you haven't been to this channel, welcome to Large Mouth Lunkin. My name's Kermit. What I try to do is go out and bass fish and give you the best of what I know, you to see my experience, and for you, me to tell you what's going on, why I chose to do what I did. So today, I'm back at Los Banos Creek, the D Dam, the detention dam. The conditions are kind of calm. It's bright skies. The water's clear. I'm looking to give a really natural presentation. And that's why I went with the wacky rig. So sit back, take a look. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> This is a shot I haven't tried over here. Get them up. All right. There we go. Woo. Beautiful. That sure didn't take long. And I definitely didn't have my drag set. Let's take a look. Nice looking fish. A little bit of damage on the tail. I'm not sure if that's recovery damage or it's getting close to spawning, but. That's what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and put them back. All right. All right, let's get back over in here. I saw another one floating around, so. All right. Two casts in a row. Two casts in a row and we're on them. There we go. Through my worm, but no, pro no problem. All right. Let me go ahead and take this out. Oops, rehooked him. Oh, bad. Let's get that out. Oh, come on, God. Do it. Let's go ahead and release them gently because I saw some other ones in here. So let's go. All right. All right, I can see a bass right in there. But we'll see how it goes. He's tucked in under that cover. Man, I can see y'all in there too.
All right, folks, another one. See three right there, but they could probably see me too, so they didn't bite. So I threw out just a little bit further. Got this one here. All right. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and put them back. There he goes. All right, they keep throwing my other worms, so I just have this, these left, the straight green pumpkins. Let's see, I see a couple, I see a couple bass hanging out right there. Like I said, they might be able to see me too. I could be the problem. So I'll throw, again, more out this way. Hmm. I guess there was one too out of there, I don't know. Hmm. It's trying to get cloudy over here, but let's see. I know there's some bass over in here and possibly in that little darker area. All right, this might be my biggest one yet. Move is hiding over in these shadows. Mm. All right, so that's a nice one there. Check that out. All right, let's go get this one on the scale. How you doing? Yeah. Ooh, nice. Mm, good, good. Let's go ahead and do it. Zero it out. All right, 3.34. Let's get it back. 3.34. Yeah. All right, folks, take a look at them again. 3.34. Come on. Uh-oh. Are you serious? Come on, come on. Come on. No. No. Come on, you. Come on. Come on. All right, Lunker League, I had a good time, as always, out there getting used to the wacky rig. As you can look and see, the conditions of the water, very clear, very minimal wind. That's when I try to go with the natural presentation of a weightless wacky rig. Incredibly effective. What I'm using is a weedless hook. I'm trying to hit the areas in the grass that are open because you can look out and see that grass and then you see dark areas and of course dark areas for predatory fish are idea that's where they like to hang out and capture their prey so trying to throw within those different areas because it is grass and thick grass 
I'm going with a weedless hook so I can pull it through that grass and try to search in those different holes without reeling up and casting and reeling up and casting. So if I can walk it through the different areas and move it along, it can become also an effective search tool. In addition to that, that last bass I caught, that three pounder, it ended up not making it and I'm not sure why. I did not take it out of the water for longer than I normally take other fish. Uh, in fact, I, for some reason I was trying to be rather quick with that fish. I thought I got it right back in, no problem, but I just could not get that fish to respond normal. Um, spent about 10 minutes with that fish trying to revive it and when it swam off swam off it swam off kind of funky and then as i went to other places and came back i think it was that same fish that i saw belly up out there and that's something i just hate to see um i was pretty sad about that yes we do hook these fish but you know in the hopes that they just go ahead and swim back off and grow up to be larger to be caught again um, and to live good lives. So, um, still a great day. That did have me down for a bit, but I learned quite a bit. With that clear water, I like to go with the uh, watermelon uh, seed, or watermelon more so than the green pumpkin. I was using a red, black flake. That's generally my go-to when the water is extremely clear. If it is a darker water, then I go to more of a green pumpkin, black flake style, but traditionally what I've had success with is more of the watermelon red. So that's what I enjoy. Uh, I generally go with the Yum Dinger one there. Uh, they cost less, but it's also a more durable plastic. Many times I don't go with the O-rings. I'm just throwing on different baits and sometimes I just don't want to slow down and throw on that O-ring. Of course, in a tournament situation, I would probably uh, go ahead and use the O-ring. Um, I have come across uh, an idea that I saw. I don't know if it was realistic fishing, uh, I believe. Hopefully that's it. Uh, correct me in the comments if you've seen it somewhere else. But since I have a daughter and we put her hair up all the time, we had these little rubber bands and I like to use those. They're easier to get on. I do have the I do have the O-ring tool, um, and what I have noticed, if you don't have the right size ring, or if you try to double your ring, uh, it starts to cut through my bait. Although it does last longer, I do feel that it gives it a little bit different action. So with the Yum Dinger, I just pop it on there, and generally I'm doing that right behind the hook slot that's in the yum dinger because the most yum young dingers have a hook slot in them so right behind that which gives me a consistent place to put my hook so that i know what my presentation is doing at all times it tends to last through bites in fact i've put on the gary yamamoto's uh which is a worm i love which catches a lot of fish but in that scenario, when you're hooking it in the middle, if you get a strong enough fish, I've had them suck it completely off the hook. Um, I had that happen about two or three times, probably after a cast or two, after it's gotten a little bit weak, but I'd get that hit, go to pull it up, and it's just an absolute clean hook. And that fish has a belly full of worm. So, that, again, I like the young dingers. They're just a little bit more durable. Um, I like that color of the of the watermelon red and black flake in most cases. I think it really gets the attention of the fish and uh, gets them biting. So if you've been here this long, please like and subscribe. Please tell other people to get involved. Share this video. Let's have a nice community network. My Lunker League, I love you and I'm out.